In this video, we're going to show you a brief overview of how the image editor program is laid out. We're also going to run through a quick project to show you the capabilities of the software. Okay, up here at the top, we have our drop down menus file, edit, view, draw, and so on. Uh, in most cases, uh, you'll find most of these tools are located somewhere on the uh, interface. The commonly used ones you'll, you'll use from the interface uh, and not from the drop down menus here at the top. Okay, the next toolbar we have here is our standard toolbar new, open, save, cut, copy, paste, undo, that type of thing. We also have our zoom tools here, which a very useful one is this zoom fit. If you click on that, what that will do is it will maximize your your picture uh, to the uh, full size of this uh, gray area in here. Okay. Also keep in mind that if you're trying to zoom in, you can use the zoom tools up here to, to zoom in and out with, but if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, if you uh, click on the picture and just scroll back like that, it zooms out, and if you scroll in, it zooms in like so. Okay, so that's a very easy way to navigate around your picture. Okay. We also have some draw tools up here. most useful one here is the draw text tool. Okay, we have our lighting tools starting with the light bulb. This allows us to do holiday lighting uh, through the, uh, the lighting toolbar. Uh, a couple of very useful tools over here would be the rectangle area tool and the scissor tool. We use these whenever we do cloning, which is removing unwanted materials from the background. Okay, we also have our font toolbar here along with our brush size. And these are our alignment tools. So if we want to move to front, move to back, we would use these grayed out tools here. Now with the program, whenever you see something that's grayed out like this, that means it's not quite available because on this one, I'd, I can't move to front and move to back because I don't have anything on this project. I have to have at least two plants on here for that move to front, move to back to be enabled. Okay, over here on the far left side is the Easyscape toolbars. These are your, your commonly used tools such as uh, your draw grass, mulch, edging, retaining walls, and the Easyscape paver tool. Over on the right side of the program is what we call the workspace, which we have several sub tabs within the workspace. The first one is the properties tab. So if I have an item uh, selected on my project like this, uh, it tells me what the common name is and the botanical name and the category and subcategory, and then the size of that item. Okay, I have an objects tab here. The flower is the objects tab. And this will show me all of the objects that I have on uh, my project and the layering uh, that they fall under. So uh, as I put things on here, you'll see that it, it starts to, uh, to uh, put more objects here. And it, when I move to front, you'll see that those objects will uh, move up and down that list. Okay, the next tab here is the lighting tab. Lighting has very specific properties such as uh, brightness, uh, uh, you can change the bulb color and uh, the glow and the intensity, so uh, lighting has very unique properties, so we have a tab here by itself. Okay, the next one is our, our layering tab, so if you want to turn on and off layers, you can do that here. Okay, and then on our image tab, whenever we have an image selected like this tree, uh, you can adjust such as things like the uh, contrast and the brightness, the hue, saturation, and so on uh, just by grabbing those sliders and sliding that over while your plant is selected. And then we have our Clearview tab which enables us when we have multiple plants on here it makes uh, certain layers uh, semi-transparent so we can go through those layers and, and pull out uh, things that are in the background uh, when we have a very congested uh, project. Okay, uh, next here we have uh, our content explorer at the bottom. This is where we keep all of our images. Now the first tab is the favorites tab. Now I would strongly encourage you to go through the image library and add your commonly used plant materials to your favorites tab. That way you don't have to sift through the thousands and thousands of plants that we have in our library uh, just to find the, the few that you like. You'll find that most designers will have uh, 50 to uh, 75 items that they commonly use on a day-to-day -day basis. So those items you would put here in your favorites. Okay. If you want to browse through the entire library, you could go into the plant library and then you would see the categories and subcategories here. 
but you'll you'll see uh, hundreds of items uh, within this category. We also have a ground cover tab, a paver tab, miscellaneous tab. That's pretty much a catch-all where we put the uh, the non-plant items. Okay. We also have a special lighting tab where we can do the uh, mainly the architectural lighting, but we also have holiday lighting displays here. Okay, we have a special tab for outdoor living. Okay, we have a uh, user tab for those items that don't necessarily need to go into the database uh, that are just uh, normally temporary items. And then we have a search tab, so if you want to uh, type in a name and click OK, it'll filter through the library and find uh, the characters that we're looking for in both the common name and the botanical name. The next tab is the greenhouse tab. The greenhouse is the, basically the communication tool that we use to communicate between the different programs like image editor, planner, and proposal. Okay, the assemblies tab, that's where you can save a group of plants as an assembly and then when you drag that assembly to your project all of those plants come with it. All right. Now let's go ahead and get started and just do a quick project here. First I'm going to, uh, I need to clean up this background a little bit. This uh, wall we uh, probably should have sprayed it off before we had taken the photograph but we didn't do that so I'm going to clean this up by using uh, some other brick area here. So I'm going to use this stone here to cover up uh, the stone along here. And we're going to use a cloning tool to do that. So I'll go to the draw menu, I'll go to clone brush and I'll select fixed and square brush. Okay, here it wants me to pick a source area. I'm simply going to drag a box around this area up here. And then when I release it, my cursor changes to a little pencil there, so I'm just going to cover that up like so. And I'll paint over this portion like so. Now whenever I do cloning, I'll always want to right click on that cloned area and select flatten selected objects and that actually makes that part of the background so now I can't go in and move that around and accidentally bump it out of place. Okay, now to get started here we're going to uh, go ahead and put a retaining wall around the front of this. So I'll go over to my EasyScape toolbar and select the EasyScape wall tool. And I have a couple different uh, tool types here to use. The one I prefer is the freeform curve and click OK. And then I have uh, several or a couple hundred uh, wall patterns to choose from. I'll go ahead and select the first one and simply uh, start clicking where I want to place that wall like so and I'll right click to set that down. Now if I had that wall selected I want to make that wall a little bit taller there because those stones are kind of squished up a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to the uh, properties tab in the workspace and I'll click on size and I'll slide that over just a little bit so that that is a little different size. I could have also come over here and uh, selected the image tab and maybe uh, changed the uh, hue or the saturation to make that stone a little different color. Okay. Now if I need to uh, tweak the way that is curved, I can just grab those little green points there and change the curvature just like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, put some mulch behind that wall. I'll go over to the EasyScape toolbar to the EasyScape mulch tool. Okay, and I'll use the uh, stretch close curve, and these will all be des described later uh, in the uh, in the more detailed videos. Okay, I'll select my black mulch, and then I just want to come in here and outline that. You'll notice that when I put that in there, it knows to put that mulch back behind that wall. Alright, let's go ahead and drop a couple plants in there now. I'll go down to my favorites tab in the works in the uh, content explorer and I'll grab a, an arborvitae and I'll just drag it up there. And I'm going to use those green points to kind of scale that to size. And I'll put another one over here. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and drop a, an azalea or two in front of there. Okay, scale those down. Just like that. And go ahead and put some coral bells in there, like that, and maybe a couple flowers. So I'll go ahead and select my uh, Happy Returns Daylily. 
scale it down to size and then just click a couple more in there like so all right now I can put some grass underneath there so uh, up on the easy scape toolbar the first one is the easy scape grass tool really doesn't matter what order I do this in I can uh, I can do the grass first if I want or I can do the grass last it doesn't really matter again I select stretch polygon and then I'll just uh, select a pattern there and when I do this I'm just going to click on the perimeter where I'm placing that grass Notice there that it puts that grass below the retaining wall. Okay, and that's it. Uh, that's how you uh, to do a, a quick project with uh, the image editor program. Now, I would encourage you to go through the other video tutorials uh, to show you uh, the fine detail and, and the different uh, techniques that we can do. Uh, there's uh, many different cloning techniques and uh, uh, walls and uh, patios and all kinds of things in the uh, other tutorial so I would encourage you to watch those and the best way to watch those is to uh, to start a video and uh, you'll go through a small segment and then you'll pause it and you'll do it on your on your system as it was doing on the video and then if you get it right you just continue on with the video if you didn't quite get it down you go back to the video rewind it and and back up a little bit and, and try it again uh, thank you and uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, feel free to contact technical support uh, for additional details.